Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the KF-21 fighter jet from Korea and Indonesia. It's the latest addition to the world of fighter jets. Now let's get right into it. Fact 1. 80% Korean, 20% Indonesian. Depending on where you look, it is assured that two nations are involved in the development of this fighter jet, Korea and Indonesia. On the Indonesian side, the 20% stake is held by the Indonesian government. However, on the Korean side, 80% of the shares of this development program is held by both Korean state governments and private industries. However, saying private industries is a little bit misleading because really it's held by the few military contractors in Korea. And these companies only really do business with the Korean government. The Indonesian side, as I mentioned, is fully government owned. There are no Indonesian private industries or military contractors that have contributed to the development of this program. Great, let's get into the next fact. Fact two, no internal base. Despite the fighter jet's stealthy look and streamlined airframe, it is actually not a full stealth aircraft. The biggest thing that is missing is internal base, meaning that for this particular aircraft, the missiles and the fuel tanks, everything is on the outside of the jet. Now on the F-22, the fuel tank is also on the outside, but the missiles and bombs are in an internal bay. And you can guess the reason is by hanging missiles outside on the wings and on the bottom of the aircraft, it will increase the radar signature and therefore allow other enemies to detect its presence. And so the KF-21 is not really full stealth like the F-35 or the F-22, but rather it is somewhere in between, that it has a lower radar signature than the traditional say F-16, F-15 aircraft, but it still is not as stealth as the F-22 or the F-35, latest generation of stealth fighter jets. It is pretty interesting, there's an intermediate step here. Great, let's get into the next fact. Fact 3, 4.5 generation. As I mentioned in the previous section, without internal base, all the missiles and bombs are hanging outside of the aircraft, increasing radar signature, making the KF-21 not a fully stealth aircraft, and therefore not really a fifth generation fighter jet. And so, I believe this is the world's few 4.5 generation fighter jets, where it straddles somewhere between 4th generation, which is your typical F-15, F-16, and the 5th generation, the F-35s or F-22s. And so I think one of the reasons why the Korean government plus the Indonesian government decided to make this type of aircraft is probably due to cost. If you think about it, the 4th generation fighter jet technology has been proven and widely available while the 5th generation stealth technology is still closely guarded by Russian, China, or United States military governments. And so, by making a 4.5 generation fighter aircraft, they could sort of attain the best of both worlds to maintain some stealth while still achieving low cost operations and production. Alright, the next fact, homegrown technology. During the development of the KF-21, the Korean government, with their contractor partner Lockheed Martin, asked the United States government for latest fighter jet technologies for radar, communications, electronics, and so forth. And they were actually denied. The United States did not want to export these technologies. And so the Korean government was left scrambling and asked its internal homegrown companies to develop similar technologies and as a result the entire aircraft is composed of all homegrown Korean technology nothing was copied or transferred from the United States government I believe this is such a great feat and they should be very proud of this accomplishment because they're able to come up with 
something equal or better at a lower cost, and at the same time keeping the technology all within their domestic realms. Great, let's get into the next fact. Carrier KF-21N. Similar to the F-35 program, the KF-21 also has a carrier program that they have announced. The carrier version is denoted with the N at the end, N as in November, and is designed to fly off and land on aircraft carriers. However, keep in mind, the KF-21 itself, the original iteration, is not even in service yet, and they've only recently announced the KF-21N for the carrier version, but it's still a very long ways to go. They need to first develop the KF-21 Air Force version before they can attempt to do the carrier version. It is pretty obvious the carrier version will be much more challenging and difficult to build. And so the Korean government and the Indonesian government possibly announced it so that it could create more interest and perhaps more buyers to this jet program. All right, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.